There's no GPS bargain that is worth someone's life. Right. Now, tomorrow, I'll be leading the worship service, the spiritual reflection for about 15 chaplains at Children's Hospital tomorrow. And we kind of divvy that up. We have a weekly reflection, and it's about a half hour, and the, the chaplains that are there come from all walks of life. And it's by no coincidence, because I don't think there is such a thing as coincidence, that the MCC chaplain would pull World AIDS Day. So tomorrow we're gonna spend a half an hour doing a meditation on World AIDS Day. It's not gonna be a teaching moment, which so oftentimes it is. It's gonna be a reflective moment where we look for healing, but we sit in our darkness. Because our darkness is difficult and hard. As a chaplain, one of the conversations I often have with people is Psalms 23. Though if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death that I would fear no evil, because that says I have to walk. I have to walk through my valley. I have to walk through the darkness, which means we're entering into it. It doesn't say we walk around, and it doesn't say we bring people. It says, I walk through. I don't run. This Advent season, my prayer is, is that we don't run through our darkness and so that we embrace it. Because as we look to the people on each side of us, behind us, those in front of us, those that lead us and those that follow us, those that aren't here and are following us, I pray that we look to them as bringers of light and they would see us as light as we walk through this darkness. And there are many reasons to sit with it this Advent season. My prayer is that we sit with it and hold it and embrace it, not as much as darkness, but as a reason for hope and purpose in our lives. I don't even know where I am in this. <laughs> All right. Which is great because there was a time up in seminary where I brought all this stuff and I didn't tell people I didn't have anything printed on it. I told a chaplain's story. And that's ministry right there anyway. But standing up even when it isn't in our personal interest is part of being the follower of a Christian teacher. And I'm not saying that you go out and protest by yourself. Loving oneself truly includes assessing when it's the right time and the right place. I'm saying that as a progressive Christian, or even simply people seeking meaning and faithfulness in their life, that we need to stand up and be visible as authentic people. And it always, always is important, but doesn't always have something that's gonna serve us individually as a reward. I think of Jesus. Well, that didn't work out well for him. It worked out well for us. I think of Harvey Milk. It didn't work out well for him. But it's working well for us. And I will bring the, the teaching of Jesus back in that it is a living word. It is working. So this is our darkness, our hope. Our Advent darkness shouldn't be so great that our work for our civil rights overshadows others because I believe we are so close. I believe that we are close because of MCC's message that we are created perfect in the light of God and that God loves us as the beloved, created us as that, and we have that message. So the oppressed becoming the oppressor quickly comes to mind. And in our darkness, I could sit with that a few different ways. But I want to sit with it in our ways as words of caution. That we don't mistrack, lose track of the ravaging that AIDS is having on people of Africa. That unfair immigration policies are creating on people inside and outside of the United States. And if we don't think that AIDS in Africa or immigration in the United States affects us, then we need to look again at our own priorities. Because it does affect us. Just as people who voted yes on eight said, that marriage thing doesn't affect me, but I'm voting out of fear that it might. Our actions need to be motivated truly on, not fear, but on hope and on light, 
on love and on grace. And MCC has a passion. We are a community that is active in a variety of settings. And I didn't bring up the program, but if you look in your program and look at that calendar, you will see that this church is an active church and not necessarily are we seeking to minister to those that make us comfortable. All right. I facilitate play, people of leather among you. Doesn't make some people comfortable to know that we meet. Agnostics meet in this church. People where we don't really ask meet in this church. That this church is a place of sanctuary. That this church, that these people, that you are a place of sanctuary where people can come and feel embraced and loved and hope that they would live an authentic life as we try to model that. So look at that calendar as we enter into this first week of hope. My hope is that we don't stop there. Because hope without action is, is useless. I can sit and hope that my bills get paid. But until I get my pen out, it doesn't happen. I can sit and hope that people start to stand up for gay and lesbian, transgender, bisexual, everybody's civil rights. But until I start to be visible, it doesn't happen. November 20th, they're asking people start wearing a shirt that says second class citizen or father of a second class citizen, child of a second class citizen, grandparent of a second class citizen because it's a way to make our community visible. Yes. I'll be wearing it. I'll be wearing it. Hope without action really doesn't do a lot. So this week as we enter into Advent action, I'm going to ask that we think of what actions we can put behind our hope. Be it that you would add, and I'm assuming everybody does this every day anyway, that you would add an additional meditation or prayer to your day. Because that can be enough. <coughs> Perhaps you will look at giving more abundantly in ways that you never have before. That, that your gift giving might include people you don't know that your charitable contributions might be made personally. I'm asking that in this Advent season of hope that the light of MCC would shine brighter than ever before because the darkness, the cloud over the world is darker than ever before. And this is our opportunity to step out and show the world that we are powerful, we are loving, we are caring, and we put words into action. That is my Advent prayer for us. It reminds me in my closing story of a family I sat with. I sat with this family for about two weeks as the mother was in the hospital. And she had been shopping with her kids, three little girls. None of them were older than 13. Now she was in the ICU and she was in a coma and eventually she was brain dead. The father came to me, the chaplain, the MCC chaplain, and said, I don't know how to talk about this with my children. Will you tell them? Sometimes when you tell somebody your parent has died, there isn't hope. There's darkness. There's darkness all around. That's the MCC ministry because hope comes from if this is your darkness, you don't have to do it alone. That is my hope for us, that we leave this place in greater community, greater messages with people, amazing messages of hope. And when it's your darkness, you don't have to explain it to me, but I'll be with you during it. And with that, as we start into this Advent season, I pray for all of us as I pray that you will hold me. Amen.